So this is the new large format printer from Elegoo. This is the Neptune 3 Max. And you might be wondering how big this actually is. So here is the Neptune 3 Pro for scale. So as you can see, it's a bit bigger. But if you're looking for actual data and numbers on this, it has a build volume of 420 by 420 by 500 millimeters. And of course, with this being a bigger printer, it's going to come in a heftier box. And this thing is absolutely packed with foam, which is great seeing that it looks like my box got dropped on one of its corners. And here's everything out of the box, and it looks like nothing was damaged due to the packaging. And if we take a look at the bottom part of the machine itself, this entire build plate is actually magnetic, and it's a flexible PEI build sheet. And putting it back on isn't that hard, but there are no guides, so it's all on you. Just for another comparison, here's the build plate off the Neptune 3 Pro, which looks absolutely tiny put on top of the Max. So let's get this thing flipped over and see what's running it. But first I have to remove all of the screws on this panel. And you also have to remove this drawer. And if you are doing this, make sure to keep in mind that this is connected to a fan. So don't just yank this panel off, make sure that you actually unplug it. And because how big this thing is, it looks really empty inside of here. And from the looks of it, it's using the same main board as the other Neptune 3 printers. And they're using ferrules on all the connections, which is a good sign. As you can see, the power supply is in here as well. And if you needed to change your power input setting, now would be a good time to do that. So with everything flipped back over and put together, I actually need to remove something. There's these little 3D printed guards on the wheels that makes it so the bed doesn't move back and forth for shipping. And there was four of them in total, but after removing them, the bed moved no problem. The top half of the printer is held on with two bolts on either side, and due to this thing being so big, I'm just hanging it off the side of my workbench and putting the screws in on either side. And with that all done, there's a display holder on the right hand side that needs three bolts to mount it to the frame. And they're using the same removable magnetic screen as the Neptune 3 Pro. And plus. But honestly, the overall setup for this entire printer is really straightforward and easy. It's basically just a handful of bolts and plug in a few wires. This does come with a filament runout sensor, but it is a little bit of a downgrade compared to the one on the original Neptune 3. It's basically just a limit switch. But it does work and you can mount it to either side of the spool holder if you wanted to, but it is more meant for the left hand side. And there are two support rods for the back of this that will make this a little bit more sturdy, especially with how tall the gantry is. And the last thing I'm plugging in is the hot in assembly, and I'm pretty much good to go. It does come with this paper that tells you how to adjust things like a wobbly bed or wobbly hot end. It also goes over the leveling process and you can use this to help space your nozzle from the bed. And leveling this printer was surprisingly easy with how big the bed is. I did have to adjust my Z offset a bit because it was way too far away from the bed. I basically just brought it down to where it was barely touching the center of the build plate. And then I was able to start manually leveling the bed. And this part is assisted, you just have to click on each number so it moves, adjust the knob, and move on to the next one until you're done. I typically adjust it so I'm just barely scraping on the paper for each of the points. And once you're done with that, it will start heating itself up and probe the bed 63 times. This is going to build a mesh and then it'll be able to compensate for any of the high or low points and keep everything as level as possible. And once that's all done, you'll be able to see all the values on the screen right here. So let's try our first test print, which came on the SD card. And with this being the first print, I'm going to live adjust the Z offset, just in case if it's too close or too far away. And this is pretty much standard practice for me after leveling a printer, seeing that the Z offset is almost never right. And this is a great way to just dial it in. And for this print, I'm using a tricolor silk filament. And if you're looking for anything I use in this video, I'll have links to everything in the description below. But anyways, here's the finished print, and let me just pop it off the bed. And it looks like it did a pretty decent job, and you can see the color transition from the tricolor filament. But this is just a test print, and it's nothing special or complex. There was another file on the SD card, and it's a tool holder for all the tools that came with this printer. And it looks like it came out pretty nice. There is a brim on this for some reason that I need to take off, but other than that, it's fine. And this just clips right onto my spool holder and all the tools fit with no problem. But I'm not a fan of this tool holder. It's way too high up because this thing's so tall. So I'm just going to use the drawer for all the tools and I designed a holder so I could put my nozzles in there without them getting lost. And I could have designed it to have inserts for the other tools, but all I really need are the clippers, the scraper, and the wrench for the nozzles. But if you really wanted to, you could throw everything else in here as well. And if you want to print one of these for yourself, I'll have the file in the description so you could just download it. And speaking of things to download and print, I'm going to try and print this Boba Fett bust. Even though it looks like this was more designed for resin printing, but we'll see what happens. This is going to be a 16 hour print and I'm using tree supports, so we'll see how everything turns out. And it looks like it finished with no problem, so let's get it off the build plate and start removing some of these supports. And it looks like they come off pretty easy, and everything underneath looks really nice and sharp. So I'm going to clean up all the supports, and then I need to print out two more parts. 
And here it is all put together and cleaned up. And I'm actually surprised how nice this came out. You can see all those small details and the different textures in this. There is some stair stepping going on on the top of the helmet due to my layer height. And even the rangefinder was printed separately. And I think it came out pretty decent, especially for how thin it is. But with that said, this isn't a perfect print. And you can see that some of the steep overhangs didn't come out too great, even with supports. So with some tuning, I should be able to fix all this. And I could honestly clean this up pretty easily as it is. This printer does have a direct drive, but it doesn't have an all-metal hot end. It's actually just a PTFE tube with a titanium sleeve around it, which is totally fine if you're just printing PLA, but let me show you how to switch this over to an all-metal hot end for really cheap. For the most part, all you really need is this bimetallic heat break, and you can try to reuse the aluminum heat block, and the best of luck getting this part out because it's in here with Loctite. But if you can't, you can always get some replacement ones for really cheap, or even upgrade to an all-copper one. And luckily, I had an extra one that I was able to use, and it really is just a direct replacement. And I was thinking about making an entire video showing how to do this from start to finish. If anyone would be interested, just let me know in the comments. And I'm not going to put the stock 0.4 millimeter nozzle back on here. I'm switching it out to a 0.8 millimeter. Even though this does now have an all metal hot end, you still can't print at 300 degrees Celsius, unfortunately, due to the firmware being locked at 260 for safety reasons. That being said, this will hold up for a lot longer than the PTFE tube that was in here, especially if you're printing at 260C all the time. And I can admit that I'm not any good at doing anything with firmware, so I reached out to Creality to see if they can make some custom firmware for this upgrade. I haven't heard back from them yet, but if I do, I will put it in the description of this video. And this upgrade should work the same on the Neptune 3 Pro, Plus, and Max. And after about an hour, my 200% calibration cube is done. And for the most part, it looks pretty good. There are some artifacts on the sides, but overall not bad at all for the first print on the 0.8 millimeter nozzle. And this should help speed up some larger prints that I have planned for this printer. But sadly, I'm not going to be able to show those prints in this video, seeing that they're gonna take a couple weeks for me to get done. And if you're curious, the print is going to be a hard top for a Miata, or maybe two hard tops. We'll see how it goes, and I'll definitely be making a video about it. And seeing that this is pretty much designed to be printed on a 400 by 400 bed, it's almost perfect for this printer. But anyways, my overall thoughts for this printer are pretty much it works out of the box. It's pretty easy to set up just like the other Elegoo printers. The build volume of this thing is pretty crazy, especially at the price point, which is only $470. But let me know what you think of this printer in the comments. And that's about it for this video, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!